Always pleased to be joined by infectious disease expert, Dr. Dale Kalina, but that also means something else has gone wrong. Good day, Dr. Kalina. Hi, it's good to be back. So it's norovirus that we're talking about this time, also known as Norwalk virus. And I was kind of curious about this. Is it the exact same thing, interchangeable terms? Yeah, so Norwalk refers to the disease itself, and norovirus is the disease or is the virus that causes Norwalk. Um, so that's why you'll hear Norwalk and norovirus kind of used interchangeably. But, you know, in the same way, it's kind of like SARS CoV 2 is the virus that causes COVID. So that's the way you can think about it. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, all we've heard out there in the media is that, oh my goodness, norovirus, it's back. But in actuality, it's returning to the levels that it was before we stopped going outside. It's really, we're just interacting and we're kind of back to where we were, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. So it's it's kind of part of that return to normalcy, I suppose, in, in not the most positive way. And uh, over the course of the past three years, where there was a lot of focus on public health protocols, people were staying home if they were feeling unwell, people were staying home in general. So that meant that Norwalk wasn't really spreading around. So we didn't get a lot of spread of the virus itself, um, and you didn't get a lot of people that were becoming sick with it. We almost always see an increase in the spread of norovirus in the winter months, um, but it is associated with outbreaks that occur primarily in schools and daycares and in long-term care homes as well. And it's not to say that everyone can't get it because anyone can get it, uh, which you would know if you have kids, right? But, um, but unfortunately, it is coming back and it's right about where we would expect it to be for this season and for this time of year. Well, we should probably define exactly what it is and how it's transmitted, as gross as these details may actually be. So I'll, I'll leave them to you. So norovirus is, is an incredibly transmissible virus, <clears throat> is the first thing to talk about. Um, but it spreads through a slightly different way than what we would have been talking about for the past few years with COVID or the flu. So this virus spreads through what we call fecal oral transmission. And that's exactly what you think it is. Um, but it's usually not in the way that you think it would happen. So fecal oral transmission you get <clears throat> with, frankly, not washing your hands, and uh, if, especially after you've used the bathroom. And this virus also really likes to live on surfaces. So yes, of course, um, bathroom surfaces, but also other surfaces as well. Things like cell phones, um, elevator uh, uh, buttons and doorknobs, things like that. So really, the importance of washing your hands can't be overstated with this one. And the symptoms, uh, if someone does contract this, what should people be looking for to say like, uh oh, I, I think I've got norovirus? So it's usually not subtle at all. Uh, so the symptoms that you almost always start with is vomiting uh, within about 12 hours, usually of onset. Um, and sometimes that's also accommodated or sorry, accompanied by diarrhea as well. So you would expect an onset of symptoms of around 12 hours after you've been exposed to it. And it should last for kind of um, an absolute maximum of 36 to 48 hours. So again, it's usually not subtle at all. It's usually quite obvious and quite a quick onset. Um, it also usually rapidly spreads to the people around you. Um, so that can often be a telltale sign as well. Treatments for this, because I guess one of the worries with it kind of being a a, a double ender to a degree is dehydration could be a real problem with this. Dehydration is exactly the biggest problem. So when you have any disease that causes a lot of diarrhea or a lot of vomiting, and this one does both, it is really important to hydrate. And it, particularly if you are at the extremes of age, so for kids and for older adults, it's really important to stay hydrated just because there isn't as much of that reserve capacity. So that is certainly um, drinking lots of fluid, replenishing your electrolytes, things like that, um, and also trying to get some more nutrition in, in general, if you can. And doing that in small stages, particularly the beginning, sometimes that's where you need to start. But realistically, if you can't get any nutrition in orally, then that would be a time to go into a hospital and get some IV fluids as well. That's what we're here for. And that's the time uh, that you should think about going into uh, your uh, local urgent care center or into uh, a hospital. 
Now you mentioned it is highly transmissible. For, for what period of time is it transmissible? Only while people have symptoms or is there a trail period as well afterwards? So it's very, very transmissible. One of the most transmissible viruses. And the thing to remember is that this one really likes to stay on surfaces. <clears throat> so especially bathrooms, it try to keep everybody sick to using one bathroom and clean the bathroom really well. This is where we need to use things like bleach and heavy duty cleaners because it really likes to stick on surfaces for quite some time afterwards. So be careful, wash your hands and wash those surfaces because it can last for a little while afterwards too. All right, Dr. Clean, I appreciate you checking in for this. And I say I hope to talk to you again, but I don't know. I mean, if I don't talk to you, then nothing's going wrong. Well, I'm always happy to help out when something is.